Now that we've set the stage for why we have the ESSA project and how it relates to the, the broader economic and uh, digital and technology growth in the European Union, we're going to go into three presentations which describe uh, the ESSA project in a nutshell and a look at the first tools and measures. So back to Tony for the first presentation, which will be the general overview of the project and the blueprint outline. Yes, uh, thanks, Scott. I will uh, quickly go through this um, through uh, this um, outline of um, of uh, the conf of uh, the the ESA blueprint. Let me just put it in full screen. Um, so I will give you a very briefly an overview, but uh, uh, concerning the whole uh, the whole conference today and tomorrow, you will get more detailed information about it. Um, so, um, as, as Felix already mentioned in the beginning, um, there are uh, different, there is the, this uh, new skills uh, agenda uh, activity from Erasmus Plus on sectoral blueprints and skills alliances. And there are uh, about 20, 20 already um, uh, funded uh, sectoral blueprints. So the steel industry um, is um, there um, placed from, from 2019, 2020 we started, but also um, as uh, you heard, uh, some, sometimes it's also about uh, industrial symbiosis and energy efficiency. Uh, across different sectors, and uh, for in this other blueprint, uh, steel is one of uh, eight and now uh, ten um, industrial sectors um, uh, focusing on on this um, perspective uh, as well. But ESA is focusing straight on the steel industry, and. Um, it's a, as I said, it's funded by Erasmus Plus, um, and uh, it started in in January uh, 2019 and uh, will end in December 2022, end of next year. We have four million euros. We have 24 partners, and I guess up to now 17 uh, associated partners already got an award from the University of uh, Deusto, I think Aito is here, um, uh, concerning um, the social impact, um, a project with a high social impact, impact um, uh, let's say based um, from uh, or given from, an, uh, from a university, which is also very much uh, uh, industry and technological oriented. So what are the objectives, the expected results? Um, the, main, um, the main objectives are is uh, to adjust the workforce continuously proactive um, and uh, to deploy and implement uh, new technologies um, aiming at the optimization of the production, but also we took into account the, the maintenance process. What we want to uh, reach is uh, to monitor and shorten the implementation of industry relevant qualification and training. I also mentioned already political support and uh, we are for sure we are looking at um, upskilling schemes and uh, management of knowledge. Last but not least, we are also focusing on the attractiveness of the industry uh, and careers for talented people, so on recruitment and retention. Our dedicated mission is an industry-driven, that's important, proactive adjustment of future skills with the, indus with the industry and for the industry, as I said, uh, have said it in the beginning uh, in, in my welcome uh, address. So what are the programmatic, let's name it, label it like this, a programmatic orientation and the main challenges. So it's 
um, we are looking at the transformative potential and power and also uh, looking at from a, a, at a systemic change. So we want to, to change um, the, the, have to look at the, the system um, elements. And we, we want to look, uh, or we will look, or do look from a holistic perspective. And all these are uh, focusing or leading to, to a development of new social practices based on new infrastructure, cultures, behavior, minds, set routines. So we have to change our everyday um, activities um, under this uh, new perspective. And beneath the, the individual part uh, and societal part, let's say, uh, we also need new alliances. So new constellation roles, tasks and responsibilities, reciprocal interplay of different actors, etc. I will um, uh, show you what uh, we, me, uh, how we do it in, in the ESSA project. Um, the main point is that we, that uh, our main challenge um, coming out or also from the, from the first uh, uh, year of uh, research and looking at the, the, the recent status. There's a broad range of relevant new technologies um, affecting the steel industry, um, concerning almost all job profiles and, all and also different uh, production areas, including uh, maintenance. That's a big challenge and, and what kind of skills adjustment strategy is needed that's the, the ma main uh, driving question in, uh, in our uh, skills alliance. So, as I said, um, we, um, the ESSA partnership is a, a European steel community involvement. These are the partners, only the partners which are full partners and funded, but we have uh, almost the same number of associated partners with a high intrinsic motivation to, uh, to move on in, in uh, the direction of uh, new skills, um, um, uh, upskilling and reskilling strategies and alliances. So what is our approach? And <clears throat> also uh, play uh, represented by, by uh, work packages. Um, uh, uh, maybe I, I, I should uh, mention another point that uh, uh, ESSA is uh, now con a confirmed partner of the PEC for Skills. Um, so uh, we, are, we are also um, engaged in this uh, from my perspective and also from our actors perspective, um, very important platform uh, for, for skills development on the European level. And uh, we will contribute as much as possible to, to, this, um, to this instrument. Uh, I like it, uh, we like it very much. But uh, coming back to the approach, the uh, technological and economic development and foresight is the background, which technologies are used and foreseen, um, uh, which, uh, for which areas uh, there you will get an insight in uh, session for the following session one. Um, and um, this is the background for work package three, the company skills requirements and foresights, which job profiles are affected, which learning arrangement training programs are needed. So this is uh, um, uh, further elaborated, uh, presented in session two. And uh, session three is, uh, is about the VET system, anticipating future requirements. How could the VET systems contribute? Uh, what kind of measures are existing, etc. All these three elements uh, lead to the European blueprint uh, uh, where we already developed a, a prototype uh, for, uh, as a practical target group friendly orientation and information uh, framework. Um, and uh, this will be sustainably updated. Transfer and implementation, especially the rollout to the member states and steel regions, I will tell something about it, and policy recommendations and dissemination uh, will um, uh, become a point uh, of the, at the end of the project. Uh, this frame is translated, was translated in 
the first SR blueprint prototype. So you will um, see some uh, the the elements of the uh, of the approach um, um, uh, here reflected. So based on the technological, economic demands and skills requirements, uh, we are working on the skills adjustment with skills classification, job profile assessment and VET support. But also this is leading to or embedded then in strategies and measures. I will tell something about uh, our, what we uh, think uh, is important to for for a structure is the foresight observatory, but also training offers and learning uh, arrangements. Image and recruiting talent management uh, will be uh, a part, and uh, yes, so pilot measures and tests as well. All these strategies and measures uh, are not, uh, let's say, could not be uh, put in place without uh, uh, alliances and, and leadership. So we look there at the European level um, and uh, the national and regional uh, level, but we also look at joint processes for associations, companies, training providers, and so on. Um, organizing as a in a governance structure implementation and rollout within a European open coordination uh, method, uh, focusing then on uh, on the steel regions where people live, work, and learn but also at the national vet systems. And this we want to do in cooperation with other related industry related uh, blueprints. Some more details on this, <clears throat> on this uh, different uh, levels. Um, so technological development and demands and uh, skills needs uh, will present it um, as I already said in the following session one. Um, I, to stimulate you, uh, it the main result was that all recent Industry 4.0 technologies are in place in the steel industry and uh, the, uh, an integration of all the production systems um, is uh, necessary from a skills perspective. Um, it's more an incremental upskilling of existing job profiles. Um, and um, a buy-in of missing digital competences by the companies and also recruiting talented people with digital skills. But the focus is much more on an incremental upskilling. Concerning the skills adjustment, we made skills classifications, uh, which will be um, the topic of uh, session, session two, the industry requirements. Um, we developed 26 so-called family trees with more than 200 job profiles. So um, uh, to, to get a good and comprehensive overview about the production areas and the functions and jobs within these production areas. Um, to, we can, uh, because we couldn't, could not handle such a large number of uh, job profiles, we selected nine representative, representative pilot job profiles um, um, and uh, uh, we will add uh, some more now, but in the first phase, uh, we tested these uh, job profiles and asked uh, for the skills um, classification there. We developed a template for it. And, um, and the main focus is on T-shaped skills as um, came out in the in the uh, small poll in the beginning before the conference, uh, technical professional uh, skills are not so much um, um, uh, on on the agenda, um, um, but uh, the the transversal and for for uh, especially the digital skills are almost uh, relevant. So the soft skills are important. Concerning the the vet occupations, we, we try to combine our job profiles as much as possible with the ESCO occupations. So the European skills, competences and occupation database uh, we are working together with. And we focused on five different vet systems uh, analysis, Germany, Spain, Italy, Poland and UK. This is a part of the session three uh, following, so you get 
more information about this there. Yes, concerning strategies and, and measures, as I already said, we are focusing on a European technological, technology and skills foresight observatory. We want to implement such a structure and uh, based uh, or part of this observatory will be uh, uh, a regular European technology and skills foresight uh, panel, um, which is important. And two other things are relevant. Um, we are focusing on training ecosystems on the European level, um, the, the, what we call Steel Hub, so European online training ecosystem, but also we are developing regional training systems um, um, as well, uh, and you will get some information as well. So just very briefly, we are, we are focusing not so much on new digital jobs and emerging occupations, or uh, let's say the uh, digitization of uh, small digitization of unchanged occupations. We are looking at, uh, let's say, a middle change of, of skills and uh, um, in a way now a high number of uh, jobs affected by digitizing existing occupations concerning new skills and upgrading. And I said transversal skills and specific skills. T-shape is on on uh, our uh, fo is our focus, and uh, you saw you you voted uh, these uh, different skills categories already in the beginning. Um, so uh, and and there it appears that they are all relevant, um, but a, a great focus or a big focus is on the soft uh, soft skills or transversal skills. Yes, the SR online training ecosystem will be presented uh, after my presentation by, by Jorge. Um, just a, a small focus on, on the um, observatory. Uh, so we want there to, um, to put this in place for monitoring and evaluating technological economic development skills requirements and also the VET system perspective. I already showed this. And uh, yes, that's uh, very much on the on the agenda um, of, uh, of our our project. Um, we are working on the on the foresight panel um, and uh, also on the uh, on the online and regional training ecosystem perspective. Also very much uh, by improving the image of the sector and uh, careers. Um, yes, alliances and leadership and rollout. Um, I, I won't, will not go too much in detail, but uh, the main point is that we will integrate the SR measure, measures in existing European national and regional infrastructure as, as much as is, it is possible. Um, this uh, will be, I will come back to this uh, tomorrow, um, but uh, to show you that uh, our implementation on, ro on rollout is focusing on the European level, the national, the national level and the steel organizations there and the regional and member uh, level um, to develop these uh, regional skills ecosystems. Um, Yes, uh, um, we we are looking for or uh, we are mapping uh, the steel regions. Uh, we have an overview in Italy, Poland, Germany, Belgium, Bulgaria, um, but we are also uh, in touch um, with uh, with other uh, additional steel regions, um, more or less from from uh, all over uh, all over Europe. Yeah, this is an example. Um, in, in Poland, so the steel regions there is very, very easy. <laughs> Let's say it like this. Uh, we will concentrate on the, the south, uh, southeast area of uh, Poland where all the steel companies and related uh, training providers are uh, placed. And we will collaborate with existing platforms. So the European Centers of Vocational Excellence, Smart, Special, Smart Specialization and the Cluster Collaboration. This is uh, very important because all, all these uh, steel related 
uh, clusters will be presented uh, tomorrow um, uh, in, in one of the, the sessions uh, as well. This is an example how far it is going. So we want to check uh, or we want to integrate in a, in a steel region, um, regional uh, training uh, ecosystem companies, economy, trade unions with national and local scope, training providers, national and local research institutions, also national uh, and, and local. You cannot get everyone, but uh, we, are, we are depending on, um, on the willingness um, uh, and uh, uh, set up a platform for these, uh, these um, skills uh, ecosystems. But, I, but uh, we will rely on already existing platforms and uh, actions and ecosystems already in place for the steel industry in the different areas. So the next step of the implementation and transfer will be the blueprint prototype and uh, testing. So the observatory, the panel, the online training ecosystem, the regional training ecosystem, and very important integration of the stakeholders, associations, social partners for structure and leadership, vet system institutions for pathways for skill supply, integration of training, uh, SR training, company training, office and usage, usage uh, collecting training and train the trainer offers from the training providers, but not to forget also civil society, especially on the regional level for the integration of social innovations in education and employment and uh, social um, um, integration. I hope I have uh, the time for one slide. Uh, very briefly, um, I always say that this is a uh, blueprint development is a social innovation process. Um, so from the challenge to the idea, the invention, intervention, the implementation, and finally to the institutionalization and impact. And there have to be feedback loops. If something's not working, we might have to go back to, to a further stage uh, to, to arrange things new. Um, uh, and uh, let's, it's also a, a process of uh, integrating more and more actors um, in, in the skills alliance and, and strategy, um, hopefully be successful and sustainable after the project time in uh, existing uh, steel industry structures. So that's from my side. So thank you very much for, for listening. And uh, if you have uh, any questions and so on, please put it in the chat or raise your hand. Back to Scott. The next uh, speaker is uh, Jorge Mura, and he's gonna talk to us about the online skills uh, ecosystem and some pilot training. And Jorge is manager of Steel University with World Steel Association. And he's been with World Steel since 2014. And it's very relevant because he's brought a new set of digital skills, which has revitalized the digital approach of Steel University. So with that, Jorge, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. Um, so let me start sharing my screen. Uh, and I will put this one like this and share. All right. So I hope that you can see my screen now. Okay, um, so today I, I will talk about, um, I, I, we will deliver a short presentation where, where I talk about online skills ecosystem and pilot uh, training course. So what we have done so far on these last two years of uh, the ESA project. So this is just a small picture of, of these two approach. Uh, the first one, let me just click here my pen. So the first one is uh, a collaborative tool to disseminate training to support upskilling and reskilling talent in the steel industry and also in the academia. And 
Also, I will talk about the pilot training course that is, is a blended learning program that we ran uh, last year where we use uh, e-learning, webinar, simulation, and gamification in order to engage students. And I will show you some results and feedback from the students on this process. So let me start first with the online skill ecosystem. Before to jump into the tool, uh, let me describe a little bit more the ecosystem uh, from the point of view of ESA. The first is the industry. So the industry receive competences, uh, people with competence that are recruited into the company. Then there is an induction training program. There is a specific training. Then there is a cycle of training around the company. So that uh, the company demand competences. And normally the competence come from the VET system. So in the VET system, we have uh, formal training where the students get a particular competence that are necessary for the, the industry. But also new players uh, appear in the last years that is individual uh, training platform that deliver training online where they also, uh, we call informal training uh, where the students go and see a video, see a course or or go through a training program online that also develops some competence on the person. And also the associations, the associations deliver training sessions that also can be in, in a web content that they deliver a competence map on the person. As Felix uh, mentioned and Gabriel Borgante at the beginning, there is from the European Union, there is uh, some tools that try to monitor the skills and also have a, like an ESCO that also have a description of the occupations that happen on the, on the industry. And the industry, we saw the industry in, in the steel sectors, automotive sector, construction, so th those are related with steel. So this is the ecosystem and we need a way or a centralized system to connect all these stakeholders. So we we thought on this uh, new approach that we call a steel hub. A steel hub, a steel hub has a component that is related with the people profile database, job profiles, also evaluations, content, and based on that can generate some personal curricula uh, for, for the training. All this information due to that is a centralized repository that connect all the stakeholders on the system can help us to make analytics that can be, be the source of information to the government or also to bring information to the industry and also the bed system. Saying that, I will focus right now on the steel hub to go deeper in detail what the steel hub is. For that, we prepare a short video that I will, I will play right now. A dynamic and changing world challenges us. A society based on innovation, technological progress and the transformation of its forms of production generates new demands. The steel industry is part of this process. Technical innovations make it possible to develop better products and new methods make production more efficient. That's why we need continuous training to help people adapt to this constant change. Training that requires new tools to connect and organize information. Steel Hub was created with the aim of connecting educational resources distributed in multiple locations and in different formats. Steel Hub is an environment where content is structured in a competency model. Whether it is a video, a simulator or an online course, the information is organized according to international standards and reviewed by experts. Each organization using Steel Hub can contribute or reuse the content of the network. Steel Hub is an environment with quality educational resources that allow a quick assembly of courses and certification programs. But also, Steel Hub is a tool to help identify training needs. Steel Hub functions as a learning network where every link in the steel industry has its place. 
Whether a company, an independent consultant, an equipment supplier or an expert teacher, everyone can publish to SteelHub and benefit from a network of curated content. SteelHub can be connected to any industry and academic standard learning management system to integrate training in a familiar learning environment. Contact us to learn about how SteelHub can add to your training delivery. Okay, um, so this is just a, a quick picture, a general uh, view of what SteelHub is and, and offer. We start running and deploy the steel hub uh, last year and so far uh, we have 15 industries using this uh, steel hub uh, platform uh, embedded the content inside of their own learning management system we have two universities also connecting uh, to this steel hub uh, application and we have research center and associations that collaborate delivering training into the system So with that, that is, a, again, is a collaborative tool that try to be the centralized repository for content that also will give us information about the, the needs for the futures coming from the industry. Let me talk about now about the pilot training course. So we made a blended learning program. And in order to develop this program, we base on one of the competition that we have been running uh, for several years and we reinvented or changed it in order to make a, a blended learning program so the the main idea of this training pilot was pilot a blended learning program 100 percent online include e-learning webinars simulation and gamification in order to to cover all the potential uh, options or methodologies on, on the program, use Steel Hub as a way to disseminate or distribute this content and collect data and perform a preliminary data analysis. So in order to start, um, start understanding what is the level of an analytics that we can do with all the data collected. So, for that, this is the, the slide show a, a general picture of all the potential or, or possible options that we can use online. And we focus on, we focus on uh, traditional training, like uh, we use videos, we use documents, we use uh, e-learning content, we use simulations, uh, we run webinars with virtual classrooms, and also we make some um, mentoring programs uh, to support the students on the process. And that have been de developed or delivered through an XAP that is um, the Steel Hub, and also everything was mobile friendly. This is just uh, a, a view of the different elements that we use on this, on this blended learning program that we use e-learning, uh, we use the content for continue casting course, and secondary steel making course. Then we use the simulations for continue casting simulation and secondary steel making simulations. And we use 3D interactive models to, to show the different component or different elements that take part into the, the steel making process. This, the result of this um, worldwide competition was uh, 50 companies participate on, on this uh, competition. Uh, 90 education and institute take part of this, uh, of this process. We have people from all around the world, from China, Europe, South America, North America. And we have a total of 1,200 participants. So this show us the more or less, we have 50 and 50 between industry and students and show the diversity of the, of the students participating in this program. This program was sponsored by, uh, by companies and also research centers um, to, to deliver this competition. Was again, was a competition, was the motivation or the engagement of the learning or blended process was based on competition. And at the end, 
of the of the training, we deliver a leaderboard. And this is just the result for two different categories. One was the students, another was the industry. And these are the results for Europe uh, from, the, from the students and for the industry. Then what, so the, the, um, we have a really great success on this competition. The, the, the people that participate was quite uh, representative and we, run a survey to understand how was the feedback or what is the feedback of the students. And these is, are the result. 99% of the students recommend this uh, blended, pro, uh, blended learning process. And 33% of the, of the answer uh, use this training as a boost for my career. And also 37% use this one for the learning as a learning opportunity to, to learn about the steel, the steel industry. And, but also we said, okay, this, uh, the impact was good, the number of people was good, and what can we do with the data collected from this competition? So this is just an example of the data. Each dot that is presented on the graph represent each student, and we can start analyzing the um, for example, the, this, this student here compared with this student here, there is a learning gap between those. So a skill gap that can be fulfilled with learning. So this tool help us to also identify in the same, in the same company, so the company eight, what is the level of the skill of these students and try to close this gap inside of the industry. But it's, that is not the only, the only feedback. We can compare the different, uh, the different companies. For example, this company here, the average of the company is below the average of this company. So this, uh, we can see that we can compare against the same uh, blended learning process, the same simulation, the same uh, methodology, we compare the result of two different uh, companies and we identified a difference between the companies that also define a gap for learning. So this one gave us an indication of how we can improve the, um, the skills inside of the company. So the conclusion was the data, the aggregated data that we collect through this process uh, will help us to identify uh, skill gaps. Also, the feedback from, the, from the, the students was very positive on this process that take almost three months to run the, the whole program. And so based on that, the conclusion so far is uh, we have a first working prototype of a Steam Hub. That, collab uh, that is a collaborative tool to disseminate the training content to support upskilling and reskilling the talent into the industry and academia. And now the next step will start rolling out this uh, Steel Hub uh, concept and invite the, the stakeholder of the ecosystem to, uh, to join us into this Steel Hub and, and run this, this process. With that, I am almost in time. So I leave the floor to you, Scott, for if there is some questions on related to this topic. Thank you, Jorge. And uh, if anybody has any questions, you can put it in chat or uh, just raise your hand and I can recognize you. Okay. Excellent, thank you, Jorge. Let's move on to the next presentation, which is on Steel Sector Careers Campaign. And we're going to do some flexible uh, introductions. Uh, we don't have Philip here, I believe. So we'll go back to Tony to present about uh, the careers work. Yes, uh, thank, thank you, Scott. Um, uh, because I, I didn't uh, 
uh, hear something from uh, from uh, Philip um, Babalis from in Intrasoft uh, since a few days. Uh, don't know what happened. I quickly prepared um, a presentation because I was also um, uh, part of this uh, steel sector careers uh, project, um, which is uh, very much focusing on um, on the, the, let's say, the, the topic, more opportunities uh, for in the steel industry than you can imagine. So I will go through it very, very briefly. Um, <clears throat> as far as I, I, um, I was engaged uh, in this project uh, to give you an overview um, about this very important um, part um, of, uh, of skills and um, upskilling, etc., and reskilling, um, because uh, uh, the, the steel industry uh, is very much uh, relying on, on recruiting uh, also uh, new people to the sector. Um, we also, in the ESSA project, we also uh, had a workshop on this uh, topic with uh, in uh, with ThyssenKrupp in Germany with uh, participants from different departments production areas and parts of the company and the main results listed here is that they are uh, aware that the steel industry is reflected at an as an old and dirty economy still um, and uh, therefore future strategies uh, have to focus on, on hydrogen and digital transformation. This has, be, has to be clearly highlighted and communicated. Uh, so a positive steel industry transformation must be communicated. And also the a political backing for green steel in Germany and Europe is uh, necessary. Also active sourcing of candidates continues to gain importance. So maintaining contact with corporation uh, institutions, school, universities, etc., cetera, is uh, in place. Also, um, uh, there was a, an, um, a statement of a reality check for young applicants and trainees. So a kind of expectation uh, management to, to uh, to um, avoid uh, the danger of disillusionment and uh, in the continuous shift work. Technical professions, blue color workers uh, must become more attractive um, because uh, these workers are control the running systems and the maintenance systems. So it's, a, it's um, uh, let's say a very important uh, part to to, um, to um, uh, foster this kind of, um, also this kind of vocational education and, and, uh, and training. And yes, quality and quantity issues were relevant. Uh, specialists are needed, but also at the same time, many workers also in simple, so-called simple production work. And uh, demand is that the workers have to be more, flexible with the ability to adapt personal skills are needed. And success, successful recruiting starts in many places. So there were some, uh, some um, uh, topics mentioned, empl employees could act as ambassadors, early affiliation of young people, show future viability of steel, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is, was, is more or less um, uh, much underlined by the Steel Sector Careers Project, which started uh, before the, the ESSA project. And uh, we, we um, gained a lot from, from their results and uh, took over a lot of things uh, in our blueprint. Uh, and uh, th therefore, this was very helpful. Yes. Main causes of skills shortages uh, related to, to this um, project um, were related to the, through the industry uh, mega trends. So there's a lag between uh, innovation and introduction of training. There is a war for talents. Academization is, um, let's say, uh, a focus, and uh, this is um, uh, taking away um, uh, careers from from the from the vet system perspective, aging uh, workforce, lack of systematic approach, 
lack of forecasting systems, um, uh, shortages in STEM graduates, and, uh, concerning the image, I already uh, mentioned this uh, before, the unattractive uh, image. So this, these are all points uh, which are also relevant for the ESA project. Um, very shortly, the, the, there are uh, some results of a, of a survey with uh, more than 2,000 uh, 2, uh, respondents, uh, job seekers and, and students. What would motivate uh, students and job seekers to work in the steel industry? So there's uh, the permanent position um, uh, is uh, uh, relevant, so the type of contract. Um, preference for mixed task, alternative office and physical. The salary is, uh, is important, but also training and continuous learning opportunities were uh, listed there, there um, on top. Um, and appealing factors for the willingness to work in the steel sector, the, the main uh, result was that uh, the, the, the students and job seekers who already had con contact to the steel industry and experience with steel companies, etc., cetera, they, um, they were very much more open and positive, uh, had a more positive attitude uh, to the steel industry. So the willingness uh, to work in the steel sector is uh, depending that um, uh, working in shifts uh, is not a problem. International career was uh, mentioned uh, very much and uh, uh, working as a, in the steel making as respected occupation was uh, a, a topic. Salaries again, um, but also to improve sustainability and to offer career opportunities and significant, significant digital skills were named as well. So let me just uh, quickly go through, through um, the communication material. So they uh, in this project, um, a lot of communication uh, material is, um, was produced and they are all free available on the, on the website. Um, I, uh, uh, edit in the presentation. So there are posters, there are, um, uh, th there is the, the web page I just talked about where you can find everything um, I, I'm presenting. Um, there are fact sheets available in eight languages. Um, there are, there is a brochure also available in eight languages. There is, um, there are info sheets um, available. Uh, there is a video which is uh, placed here. I, I will show you in the end. Um, and there is a, there are newsletters, um, also um, important parts, also in eight languages. So it's uh, I think it's a helpful uh, material to support uh, the 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 image um, and the recruiting within uh, the steel industry. So also there is was a digital. Uh, campaign, campaign about it, and uh, let me just finish uh, with a with a with a short video. Um, I hope I can find it. What is steel? Iron and coal shovels and steel mills. It is much more than that. Steel is behind the outbreak of the Industrial Revolution. It is the basis of transportation. It is about the materials that bind the world together and bring people closer. The sector managed to accomplish tremendous progress over the past few years. Along with this progress came numerous opportunities. Steel is everywhere. It stays with us from when we wake up in the morning till we go to bed, and it helps making our life better. It's really interesting uh, working in this sector because uh, you can see outside what you do here, uh, because steel products are everywhere, from uh, home appliance to medicine and transport. 
Steel and steel production has changed over the past years. It became cleaner, better organized, much more impacted by technology. The steel sector offers a lot of job opportunities in various areas. For example, from research and development to production to logistics and sales. The most exciting part of my job is that every day is a challenge, a different challenge. Robotics, for example, a robotic application in steel making industry is so difficult, so hard because you have so heavy things to move. And, and this is very, very exciting, very smart, very beautiful things to work every day. The steelmaking industry is going to evolve in the future because volume is growing and the need of steel is increasing. Companies will become more automatized, better organized and more impacted by technology. In the steelmaking industry I have seen a general modernization, so that it means trying to work in a green manner to promote an energy efficient industry. We need capable people for steel. Steel is not an outdated material, therefore, you know, we need to grow in uh, uh, performance and in order to grow with performance, we need people who like steel. I think that soft steel are very important for the development of steel making in the future. We are different versus the past. The steel sector is up for the future challenges of digitization and cutting-edge technology. Explore careers in the steel sector. More opportunities than you can imagine. Join us. Okay, thank you, thank you for, for listening and, and, and joining this. Uh, all these materials are free, so you are um, encouraged uh, to, to use them for your own purposes and we will integrate, let me just stop, integrate uh, this, um, just a like moment. design and working with computers. Um, we will integrate uh, these, uh, this topic uh, also in our uh, ESA blueprint and um, uh, as a part of the observatory, we are planning uh, and to integrate them, uh, this important topic um, uh, as well. So thank you very much. Um, I, hope, I hopefully could have give you an impression about this, this topic uh, because I took it over in the very last minute. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.